I'm going to present uh, the Dutch project uh, word combinations, word combinations, um, and I'm also doing this on behalf of my colleague Lut Kolman. So um, I will first tell you a little bit more about the project in general, um, and then I'll focus in more detail on the idioms and uh, conversational routines and how they are currently treated in the project, and then the extensions that we envisage for um, idioms and conversational routines in the project. And I will tell you a little bit about the challenges that we face as a result of that and our proposed solutions. So first, what is uh, word combinations? Word combinations is a reference work for using and understanding words in context. It's a resource that can also be used uh, for teaching and creating testing materials. It's targeted at advanced learners of Dutch, but it uh, definitely can also be useful for native speakers. And within the project, we started with the combinatorics of verbs, but we are currently also working on nouns. And as this is all about combinations, what do we mean by a combination in the project? For us, a combination is any meaningful and statistically relevant combination of words with spaces. So this can include, uh, so this includes collocations, such as offer support, advice, service, multi-word lexical units, such as lexical spots, idioms, such as to hand something to someone on a silver platter, proverbs, all good things come to an end, formula, have a good day, good morning, but also uh, semantically motivated uh, valency patterns, uh, something takes place versus someone takes his place. What do we not include? Well, we do not include in this project uh, compounds without spaces. So in Dutch, apple pie is glued together in one word. So this will not be treated in this particular project, but it will be dealt with in another project at our institute. And the same for loan combinations, ad hoc, ad fundum, out of the blue. We do not deal with them within this project. So when we started the project a few years ago, uh, well, we ov obviously we looked around uh, what other people were already doing, and uh, we are, were inspired by uh, quite a few different projects, some of which are listed here, and particularly the top three are the ones that heavily inspired us. So that's the Sketch Engine for Language Learning, probably familiar to you, uh, the um, German Evalbu, project, so the Electronic Valency Dictionary for German Verbs, developed at the Institute for Deutsche Sprache, and also the PDEF Dictionary, the Pattern Dictionary of English Verbs, uh, created by Patrick Hanks and colleagues. And uh, let me say a little bit more about Patrick Hanks' theory, because the pattern um, editing in word combinations uh, relies heavily on Patrick Hanks' theory of norms and exploitations. And this theory basically comes down to the fact that uh, he says words have meaning potentials rather than meanings. And these actual meanings are evoked by context. And then the norms are the normal phraseological patterns as the main carriers of meaning. And then you also have exploitations, which are the creative users of the normal patterns. And so what does Hanks then assume to be a normal pattern? Well, normal means either frequently used co-occurrences or typically conventionalized co-occurrences. And uh, to identify these normal patterns in uh, corpora, Hanks uses the technique of corpus pattern analysis, and I will illustrate that on the next slide. And it's also important to note here that a pattern is not a syntactic construct concept only, it's a form meaning pair, and the slots in the patterns are populated with semantic types from an ontology, such as human, animal, furniture, and then the semantic types are again categories of lexical sets, so for furniture, lexical items such as table, chair, and bed are part of this lexical set. More concretely, what do we do in our project? What tools and methodology do we use? Well, we have uh, the project is corpus based. It's based on a corpus of uh, approximately 200 million tokens. That's not that large, but that's what we have at the moment. <laughs> um, it's mainly newspaper and web. Again, a critical note. That's also, we would like more diversified material. Um, 
it does have material from the Netherlands and Belgium, so we cover both uh, varieties of Dutch as spoken and written in the Netherlands and in Belgium in the project, and the, we use past data. The data is passed with the Dutch Alpino parser. The data is um, available to us in Sketch Engine, and we use um, various functions in Sketch Engine to extract the examples and the combinations. So we use GoodX, which has already been mentioned, tick box lexicography, we still use the tick box lexicography, we do the pre-editing in Sketch Engine rather than the yeah, post-editing outside Sketch Engine, and we use the word sketches. And all the data is then extracted from Sketch Engine and further edited in our own uh, in-house dictionary writing system. For the patterns, as I said, we heavily rely on the corpus pattern analysis technique from Patrick Hanks, but we have customized it to our specific needs. In corpus pattern analysis, the annotator starts with a random sample of 215 concordance lines which are annotated. Within our project, we first use GoodX and then we annotate the top 250 sentences, so that we have shorter sentences which are more suitable for the target audience. And if needed, obviously more sentences are annotated. The annotation is done in Schema, which stands for Sketch Engine for Manual Annotation. It's currently, I think, called the Annotations Manager in Sketch Engine. But yeah, so for those who are less familiar with Schema, what does it look like? You First, I've got the concordance lines yeah, here, and they are annotated with the specific pattern label. Uh, here's the ver Dutch verb to uh, entertain. And then each of these patterns is added in a separate pane, where for each um, component or slot in the pattern, you have a separate, uh, each position has a separate slot, and each for each slot, you can add additional information. So there's information about the syntactic function, the semantic type, and there's some dummies uh, which instantiate the pattern, and then a lexical set. And the semantic types are taken from an ontology, and that's the same ontology uh, which is also used in other uh, corpus pattern analysis projects. Uh, those by Patrick Hanks and Elisabeth de Jezek. So, so far for what we do, what does it look then for the user? User in focus, huh? <laughs> uh, well, we have what we think a user-friendly user interface, uh, which offers the user access to example sentences, um, combinations, the second tab, and then patterns. And the first view is the example sentences. So here, basically, the user gets a bird's eye view of the words in context. And often, you can already see the different uh, meanings of the word here, uh, the relevant collocates, or the most prominent one, and constructions can already be identified based on these example sentences. Um, what I would like to point out here is that we do offer access to um, the full inflected uh, paradigm, which comes from our Dutch uh, uh, the spelling database. So this is a central database that we have at the Institute, and all headwords in each of our projects are linked to the central database, and on the basis of that, we can offer the user the full inflectional paradigm. Uh, and we have for this project specifically complemented with um, the relevant, uh, yeah, the subject and objects where they, so to make it as user friendly as possible. But this is dynamic, so it's retrieved on the spot when someone clicks on it. Then the word sketch, uh, the next option, the combinations, that's basically a post edited word sketch um, where the collocates are shown per grammatical relation. And the user can click on each of these collocates, then an example sentence pops up, illustrating the collocation. And you see that some of them have a different color. They are in lilac, and that indicates that they are idiomatic. And then finally, the patterns. Well, here, we still tend to believe it's user-friendly. <laughs> user-friendlier than the presentation in the pure corpus pattern analysis, but I think you can see that this gets already more challenging for users. We need rather advanced uh, learners here. But what you see is you get a pattern uh, with dummies, a uh, definition, and then example sentences. And if you click on more example sentences, all the um, sentences which were labeled for that pattern are then shown here. 
By default, the main patterns are shown, but it's also possible to retrieve sub-patterns. So for instance, when there are clausal complements or when there are um, expressions, proverbs and conversational routines that are treated as sub-patterns of a main pattern. And yeah, you, you will be learning some Dutch <laughs> along. <laughs> so yeah, just one further thing on the um, patterns. When you hover over um, the pattern string, the syntactic function and the uh, semantic type of the um, arguments is shown. And you can also click on the arguments and then you get a list of collocates together with example sentences for um, that particular slot in the pattern. So we sort of have a word sketch attached to the pattern editing here. So, yes, hold on. Oh yeah, so we already have the, yeah, you've seen, we have do already treat um, idioms and conversational routines within the project, but they are encoded uh, either as yeah, special instances of combinations or of the patterns. And to make them more accessible to the user um, and to also offer sap uh, specific search options, uh, we would like to start treating them also at the macro-structural level. Because what we think is interesting is that you can search for idioms based on an image category, such as give me all the uh, idioms that have something to do with body parts or with food, uh, or with less specific sense categories. Um, and for the conversational routines, we would like them to be accessible through a list of uh, speech acts, so that you can get all the greetings in one go if you want to express yeah, some uh, greeting. For the user, it basically means that we will get two extra tabs here. So that's uh, quite, yeah, um, well, it's not much of a difference to them. But for us, it's, um, I'll skip this slide, a lot of extra work. <laughs> um, because one of the main challenges that you face immediately when you assign headword status to idioms and conversational routines is, well, what is their lemma form? How do you decide on that? And uh, this is not a straightforward um, question to answer. Um, also judging from the fact that there's now um, in the Unidive cost action, which has recently started a specific task um, for harmonizing lemmatization rules, uh, form words and multi-word expressions across languages. So, um, and what, yeah, so that's, they will deal with it cross-lingually, but even within one language, it's a challenge. And why is that? Well, we all know, although we, even although we call multi word expressions idioms also fixed expressions, they're not as fixed as we, uh, <laughs> we think. There's actually quite a lot of variation. And there's also, if we look at current dictionaries, quite a lot of variation in how they are uh, encoded. And for most, uh, idioms and conversational routines, it's possible to find some canonical form based on corpus evidence, taking the most frequent one, but uh, this is not always the case. And especially in the case of the con uh, constructional idioms, it's uh, difficult or even impossible to say this is the canonical form. And there's an example of this here, where you have got a resultative, um, no, reflexive verb with a resultative complement uh, verb. Um, in Dutch, zich ziek lachen, uh, for instance, so the reflexive verb to laugh, and then ziek sick. Um, yeah, but it can also be, you can have a lot of different words rather than just sick here. And yeah, so what do you do? Uh, it's not just a, a um, problem that we face, it's also a problem in um, natural language, uh, more computational work. Uh, what, how do they record uh, the uh, canonical form of a multi-word expression? Well, we see various approaches in the recently released Dutch canonicalized multi-word expressions um, resource, Dukame. They use um, a finite sentence as um, a canonical form. So, um, and it's a finite sentence in the future tense, and they use additional um, codes to indicate restrictions and variations. So this, the DD stands, this has to be a definite determiner. It's most likely to be D, but it can also be another definite determiner. The zero means that the NEAT is not part, the NOT is not part of the multi-word expression. So 
And then another project I think that, yeah, if you talk about multi-word expressions and in a more computational uh, context is Parseem. Uh, within Parseem, they created um, lots of corpora which are annotated for verbal multi-word expressions. But what you see here is that they annotate the lexicalized components. So for instance, when you have the French, um, you have these um, prepositions and articles which are normally contracted into one form O, but it's first split before they annotate it, and then yeah, you annotate just the preposition A and not yeah. So this is probably useful and okay, suitable for NLP oriented work, but this, these are not canonical forms that you want to present to an end user in a dictionary, or at least we do not want to do this. So what does the lexicographic literature say? Um, well, quite a lot, but I think I can. <laughs> I don't. I don't have that much time left. I think. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say. Uh, three minutes. Okay. Three minutes, yeah, yes. I'll, I'll move on because then. Yeah. So there are no ready-made solutions. That sums it up. Um, what they say is do record them in the u in the full form in the usual constructions. So. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, do not give too much com too much context because then again the form can appear more restrictive than it actually is. Um, but that was already in 2009 and 2002 that this was uh, written. Um, there's a more recent work from the sisters, I learned they are sisters, Verbinj uh, and Verbinj. Uh, uh, from 2016, they uh, write about the canonical forms in online uh, dictionaries. Again, established a lot of variation. They put the user in focus. When in their description say it should be the least ambiguous and most user-friendly form. So, well, what do we want to do in word combinaties? Well, we basically want to find a balance between um, user-friendliness, human readability and applicability, but still being able to encode the full complexity of the multi-word expression. And we think the way to do this is to have a human-friendly lemma form which is complemented by a pattern form, as we have seen before, for the patterns that we already have in the dictionary based on the corpus pattern analysis, which are uh, suitable for more NLP-oriented work. And we also hope that we can use these patterns to automatically um, search for the idiom uh, or the conversational routine in corpus data, so in various corpus resources. And then for the human uh, friendly form, we have defined some preliminary guidelines. Um, so yes, uh, the, the verbal idioms in the infinitive form, we will encode uh, uh, obligatory arguments and variable parts of arguments and complements by means of dummies. And uh, generic forms, well, what generic means is also subject to debate at the moment, but we stick to what we have been doing for the last so many years for the moment. Um, then we Try to follow a fixed order of complements as much as possible. So always the direction and place complement before the verb and the fixed um, prepositions after it. Um, we do not include articles in the lemma form, um, although for language learners, these articles, yeah, I understand they can be very useful, but my colleague who is the head of the project <laughs> says no. We only include articles where the article is part of the construction. Um, negation will lead to two separate um, idioms, and we're still debating what to do with these extensions. Uh, Simon also mentioned that you have basically multi-word expressions have, again, collocations that you can have with the multi-word expression. Um, how are we going to deal with it? Uh, I think the solution from the Germans presented at Euralex uh, is interesting, but I don't think it's um, realizable for us at the moment, considering that we have got a very small group. They have like hub and node entries to yeah deal with everything. But so we're still de trying to figure out what to do with that. For practical work, we have yeah. Um, created the facility to have sub-entries in our entries in the dictionary writing system. This is still the XML-based ex uh, dictionary writing system. Um, so yeah, that's what we have at the moment, and we um, do not want to postpone working and recording um, idioms and conversational routines until we have a perfect system that yeah, we can use uh, to 
really do what we would like to do. So now the um, lexicographer can at least um, insert this, um, the multi-word expression, the idiom can fully edit it, it becomes a separate entry and it can be linked to from other entries then as well. And it's up to the lexicographer to decide where it will link to this sub-entry. So it does not automatically appear in all the words that are in the um, idiom or conversational routine. All this is also linked to our central database. Our se well, we have this, not the one database at the moment yet, but we have one central database and then we have, uh, how did you call them, Simon? Uh, Satellite databases, yeah. And central database is our spelling database. So each multi-word expression will get its own ID in the spelling database. And in the spelling database, all the components will also be linked to their respective lemmas. I've just done this for the, the main ones here, but also an and the, the other ones will also be linked. And then this is the structure that we are still thinking about. This is in the semi-structured form, so the hierarchical uh, XML structure. And uh, this is what we are going to experiment with. We are still, yeah, primarily the variation. How do we encode the variation in an XML structure? This is not ideal. So the more we work on it, the more we realize that we are dealing with a separate project within our project uh, word combinations. So for the moment, we first want to be able to record all instances systematically and probably the treatment will be done in a separate module, more in a uh, dictionary writing system similar to what you saw with schema, that you've got slots, and then you can add unlimited number of slots. Um, and yeah, we would like more and diverse corpus data. And then yes, thank you on behalf of the World Combinatis team, which is three people, one full-time lexicographer and then, uh, yeah, software engineer and computational linguist when they are available. So a very small team, <laughs> but thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, we have just uh, two minutes uh, for questions. Please go ahead. Yes, please. Thanks a lot. I was curious since the user is in focus and you mentioned, you know, kind of which kind of things you could add. Have you considered that the user very often wants to look things up in the context of use that they have? Because you focused on how do you generalize and that's useful once you found it. But have you considered an interface that allows you to not look for the item, but look for something in a context and then you basically provide them with the generalization? Yes, we've also considered that and that's um, I think the interface that comes closest to um, that concept is what um, Ulrich Haidt showed many years ago, that you, um, yeah, you want to express something and then you basically, from what you want to express, you can navigate through the database saying, okay, I want to use this word, but then I um, want to have an intensifier in front of it or with to go with it and uh, yeah. But we have thought a bit of it, but yes, I mean, but we, we, yeah, well, it's obvious we can't do <laughs> everything at the same time. So it's, yeah, all in small steps that we will uh, gradually keep improving. Yes, please, one more short, short, very short question. It seems no, but I just want to say that uh, in our institute we are also like discussing the same problems, really, like uh, how to link patterns, grammatical patterns, and collocations. And we have huge resource here about, uh, let's say, idiomatics, I idioms also. And uh, so we just uh, need uh, need to present our data, like maybe more in more systematic way. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's why we're here, to talk further. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, Carol, thank you yeah. very much. Now we have just 20 seconds to change the speaker. <laughs>